it's time to talk Hunger Games Part 3, or as it's known... Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1, as opposed to Hunger Games Mockingjay. Three. OK, so I think the best way of describing this is if you think of the first Hunger Games as basically being a kind of a, a, a rerun of Battle Royale, which it is. And it's funny, I remember when you read the book of Hunger Games, you made that comparison. You said to me, you know, what, what is it? we were talking about that. You said, what is that movie that you talked about that seems like a very, very Most Children thing? killing children. Exactly. And then the second uh, Hunger Games, Catching Fire, I think is very, you know, owes a great debt to, um, to Rollerball and it, because it's much more to do with how, what the game is about, what purpose the game serves. And in that way, this part three, part one, is kind of comparable to broadcast news or network in as much as it's not a gladiatorial sport because we're not in the arena. It's about the making and marketing of a revolution and the way in which television and broadcasting is used to manipulate uh, world events. Uh, so at the very big, you know, at the end of the last film, of course, what happens is Katniss Everdeen is hoiked out of the games arena by the rebel forces. She is now basically told that what they need her to do is they need her to be the symbol of the revolution. She needs to be the Mockingjay. Um, she demands that they get back Peter. And, and again, once again, sort of the, one of the weaker elements of the story is that three-way love triangle, although it's partly because the story isn't really about that. In fact, what's happened to Peter is that Peter is now being held by the capital where he is used for their own propaganda video. So on the one hand, you have Katniss being dressed up in sort of combat sheet black and told to act like Joan of Arc so they can make propaganda videos or propos as they call them. On the other hand, you have the capital doing these interviews with Peter as a sort of, you know, as a countermeasure. Here's a clip. There has been rampant speculation about what really happened in the quarter quell. And here to shed a little light on the subject for us is a very special guest. Please welcome. Mr. Peter Malark. Peter, a lot of people feel as though they are in the dark. Yeah, yeah, I know how they feel. <laughs> now, so set the stage for us. Talk us through what really happened on that final and controversial night. Well, first off, you have to, you have to understand that when you're in the games, you only get one wish. It's very costly. So basically, here they and what you know a lot of Jennifer in that. No, no, I know because what I was saying was that actually what that clip was was a clip of him being used for their propaganda mm, videos. I mean, I, I think what's interesting about that clip is actually it does pretty much encapsulate what it is that this film is about, as opposed to the other ones which have had this kind of gladiatorial uh, central arena. Actually, you know, some people said that the first two films are sort of repeating that, but they, I think they're not because I think they're changing the they're changing the the way in which those gladiatorial games look the third one is definitely i mean in, in many ways it's the most overtly political it is the one about how all of this comes down to a media war so she is brought back to uh, the rebel forces she is told by uh, julianne uh, moore's character that this is what she has to do and she has to become the mockingjay she has to help the, the districts rise up and uh, philip seymour hoffman's character uh, is the person who's you know who's behind all this the sort of you know the games maker turned king maker who's involved in designing so it's all about a media war now there are obviously problems dramatically in that it, it is less dramatically even than the previous installments. I think there's there's no question about that. However, because I mean because you haven't got the you know the, the gladiator games, what you have to have is a couple of raids and some action sequences which sort of fill that gap. But what you've largely got in this is something which is much more kind of overtly a discussion about the televise the televising of a conflict and the way in which it's all to do with supremacy of the airwaves and the way in which it's all to do with the marketing and the creation of an idea because really what the film is about is about people taking symbols and using them to convince people that their argument is right there are also very very explicit parallels being drawn between donald sutherland's president snow and between julianne moore then the rebel leader is using katniss everdeen in the same way that uh, president snow has used everyone in order to so it's all about propaganda um, it's not entirely successful in as much as th that becomes a slightly more difficult dramatic sell because it doesn't have the clear, you know, game structure. But what it does have is a, another terrific performance. I mean, I you know, I think Jennifer Lawrence is really good. She's really she has really made this role her own. And despite the fact that you still have that sort of slightly flawed love triangle thing, which doesn't quite work, it's what it's a kind of credit to her that it's that's never been a major flaw of the series, that it's not you're not really interested in that you believe in her and you believe in her journey and you believe in, in her point of view. 
I think that Philip Seymour Hoffman's character is terrific. This is the film in which he really, really comes into his own, in which you you do you know you do see that character is kind of fully rounded. I think it's got a it retains its very sparky attitude toward authority, which is that it's a, it's you know it is essentially anti-authority. Have you read all all of the books? No, I only read the first. Okay, fine. Um, and was actually put off. Yeah, because the other two books, because because the, 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 it is yeah. it has been the case for many people that they have said you know that they they kind of lost lo and I understand why because it, what it doesn't have is the clear dramatic arc of a game setup in which you go in this and then the games take place and you come out the other end of it. It doesn't have that. But what it does have is, as I said, if the first one is battle royale and the second one is rollerball, this is basically broadcast news. And I think that's interesting. I mean, we, we it we remains to be seen how they manage to get through the second part of it because it's you know it's a tougher sell and I'm not entirely convinced that dividing the last book into two is the best thing to have been done. That wasn't done, you know, entirely for pragmatic, you know, economic reasons. But I was actually more impressed by this than I thought I was going to be.